Today we are reading A Unique Education. I'm drinking a cup of tea in my mug and this came from Bratislava, Slovakia. Isn't that so fun? I hope everybody has something to drink and I hope you have your copy of A Gracious Space. If you don't have it yet, you can go to, this is backwards, I'm going to say the words, bravewriter.com slash gsfall. bravewriter.com slash gsfall. There are five free sample essays for you to download, or you can just order the book, whichever you prefer. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, Marie Charlene. Good morning, Julie. So great to see you all here this morning. Hi, Candace. So let's just get started. I don't want to vamp. I want to get right into it. Today, we are reading from day one, a unique education. Come as you are, except for those who wondered, I did put on lipstick. <laughs> All right, here we go. A unique education. The hardest part of home education is that you, the primary responsible party, don't know how to measure your efforts. It's likely you grew up with a traditional school education. You remember that progress was evaluated through papers turned in, completed textbooks, solved homework problems, and test scores. This new way of education feels too messy, amorphous, or filled with loose ends. The homeschooling parent can't appreciate that a long, rich conversation with an eight-year-old about the Blue Jay at the feeder is better than three sentences written in a workbook about it. It's hard to think that the trip to the grocery store through the Asian food section, where everyone wonders what tubers and cabbage and why fish ice are still in place, is more likely to create a connection to Asia than coloring in a map of countries. It's hard to believe that conversations over dinner about politics, values, history, and the latest movie really do teach, really do help kids form values, really do last longer in their imaginations than any set of quizzes or lectures. Yes, you want your kids to master their math facts and to learn to spell, they will, the systems you've mostly been using work for kids most of the time. What makes their education unique isn't how well you systematize all the subjects into a schedule. It's how well you share your enthusiasm for life, learning, art, literature, the power of math, to create quilts and build forts or sell cookies, the excitement of an election year to convey the importance of politics, volunteering in your free time so that your kids learn about sharing themselves with others, and finally, your enthusiasm for them. These human beings entrusted to you that you admire, respect, and for whom you hold an enormous imagination about how well they will contribute to the world as adults. Quote of the day. This comes from Monica McMaster. How apropos, just this morning I was wondering how on earth I was going to make homeschooling work again this year. And Julie, you did it again, reminded me how rich this life is and how worth the time and energy it is to homeschool my youngest daughter for yet another year. Thank you. And now, the sustaining thought. This is what you can carry through the day. Okay? What makes your children's education unique isn't how well you systematize all the subjects. It's how well you share your enthusiasm for life, learning, art, literature, the power of math equations to create quilts or build forts or sell cookies, the excitement of politics, volunteering in your free time so that your kids learn how to share themselves with others, and most important, your enthusiasm for them. You are entrusted with this thing, this serious, wonderful, scary, glorious thing called the full and complete education of your children. There is no way on earth you want to screw this up. You are more dedicated to this mission than any paid person, even if the paid people in your community are credentialed teachers, and care deeply about your children. 
but I know homeschooling parents, and they live usually in some level of terror that they're gonna screw this up. And part of the pressure of fear of screw up leads them to some of the most amazing, creative, resourced expressions of learning I've ever encountered. And what you can do when you are in that moment of terror is remind yourself that you've chosen a unique education for your children. And it's one that you're creating brick by brick, day by day, a little bit of love by a little bit of love. And it's okay that some days don't go perfectly and it's okay that you aren't quite sure what to do because all that does is incentivize you to get better at your job, to do a better job, to find resources and other people on the journey who can point along the way and help you figure it out. And I hope I'm one of those people and I look forward to this exchange over the next month. I wanna look real quickly. Did anyone ask a question? Let's see. Oh, look at you, Mary, still in bed. I love that. Good morning. Good morning. Well, good. So, as you get started today, put a smile on your face. Unless you don't feel super smiley, then just share with someone you trust in your family that today is not a very smiley day and ask them to smile at you. Maybe that's the toddler. Often the two-year-old is the safest person to trust your sad mood to because all they know how to do is cheer you up. So if you're not ready to smile, find someone in the family to smile at you first, okay? And I know for me that often it was a teenager who would give me a big hug. I would say, hey, I need a hug. And especially those really tall, big boys, they would barrel hug me. That would change my attitude pretty quick. Wonderful to see you all this morning. We're gonna keep these short. I'm gonna hop on Periscope because it didn't work on my iPad at all this morning. Oh, I know what I was going to do. I have one more thing that was a special treat for day one and I almost forgot. We have a book called Poetry Tea Time Companion and today is Tuesday, time for tea. So if you're having a day go wrong, read a poem, have tea, and I'm gonna read one poem today. These are going to happen every single morning, right when I wake up. Today was at eight, I'm gonna shoot for eight in the morning, but you know, some days it might be seven. If I'm going running, it will be seven. Um, and if it's later in the morning because I needed sleep, then it will be, but they will always be on Facebook Live. Show up around eight and you're good. All right, so I'm gonna read you one poem from our book, Poetry Tea Time Companion. It's called Mist, and it's by Henry David Thoreau. Here's the picture. We have gorgeous pictures in this book. This is also available on Amazon, so if you don't have it yet, go get it. It's, it's beautiful. Low anchored cloud, Newfoundland air, fountain head and source of rivers, dew cloth dream drapery and napkin spread by phase, drifting meadow of the air, where bloom the daisied banks and violets, and in whose fenny labyrinth the bittern boons and heron wades, spirit of lakes and seas and rivers, bear only perfumes and the scent of healing herbs to just men's fields. So beautiful. Poetry Tea Time Companion. Thanks for joining me this morning. I'll be back tomorrow. And if you want to see me on Periscope, I'll be on in just a second. Have a great day, everybody. See you tomorrow morning.